Hey everybody, sorry about that. Had a little technical difficulty situation going on. Um, so we are going to continue on with Curves on Canvas and today is July 18th and guess who we have today? <laughs> Jose Pagan. <laughs> now, if you guys don't know Jose Pagan, let me tell you, he is such a awesome 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 photographer okay i have been seeing his work for the past couple of years now and it's just like first of all you always know that it's his work um he definitely has a distinct style and quality um to his shooting to his editing and everything so like you know instantly that okay this is jose Pagan. um <laughs> and um he really just knows how to um photograph curvy women and he really just takes um pride in it you can really tell that he takes pride in it he's you know he's really serious about showing curvy women um he's really serious about showing curvy women in a positive light and it, and it shows all in his work so we had to had to had to get jose pagan um at the curves on canvas summit um, it's 2020, everybody's being safe. We are in the house, virtual is the way to go. We pivot, we don't panic. <laughs> and um, I'm about to bring him in. Are you guys ready? I'm ready, Let, let's get him in here. Thank you guys for coming in. Okay. Okay, don't let me look like one of these celebrities that don't know what's going on. <laughs> Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And you? I am doing great as well. I'm like super excited. <laughs> hey, how's your day as always? Uh, it's doing great. I'm just sending out some invites to some of my associates, fans, followers. Okay. But I'm doing great. Uh, it's beautiful down here in Florida today. Yes, so you are in Florida. Yes, was what in New York City. Okay. Um, just south of Tampa. Um, moved down here late last um September, and then COVID hit. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So COVID has just been knocking all the plans, um, crazy. Just knocking everything crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's been bananas, it's been bananas. But I'm making the best of it. Family, you know, my wife loves it. I love it down here. I just needed it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Coming from New York, that's I would say that was a good move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. New York is just so hectic all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I grew up in the city, you know, in New York City, and you yes. know, I've I've had my fill. You know, it was it was time to. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, Krissa. Yeah, so I've had my fill of, of the city life. I, I needed something different. Plus, you know, going on tour helped me kind of gauge different cities and get a different feeling, you know, so that helped out a lot. What are some of the cities that you uh, went to during the tour? Uh, what are your favorite cities? Oh, my favorite cities are uh, Atlanta, of course. Um, that was That's always a hot city. Um, yes. Puerto Rico is awesome. When I went there, we stayed at Culebra, but we shot in San Juan. Yes. Um, what else? Uh, Cancun, that was another one of my favorite cities for the Kirby Fest. Yes. That we had two years in a row. That was awesome. Uh, what other cities? Uh, had some awesome shoots in North Carolina. In especially North Rochester. Carolina? Yeah. Where uh -huh. did you get to shoot in North Carolina? Because you said Cancun and Puerto Rico, and you just think about the beach automatically. And then <laughs> you say North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the beautiful thing, North Carolina has some beautiful beaches. Wilmington was one of the beaches I shot in. Okay. Um, it, it's awesome down there. I love I love the, the vibe of the, that city. Um, okay. Seattle and Portland, two other interesting cities that kind of, Gave me a different, you know, feel of America, you know, right. like different vibes. So I love that. Okay. <laughs> They're all my favorite cities. <laughs> <laughs> right. You certainly can can't name one. Can't just name one. It, it's hard because every every city has its own charm. 
Yeah. You know, it's very unique, and people there are very unique, and you know, they all show love. Absolutely. <laughs> um, now I did get to see some of the YouTube videos that you guys did with the um, from the photo tour, and it's so crazy because I watched the Cancun one and the Puerto Rico one. <laughs> oh, okay. And so those are some of the favorite ones. Um, so what was it like to work with um, the founder of Glamour Glamour? God, her name just left me as soon as I thought uh, to say Trisha. it. Trisha? Yes, Trisha. Yeah. Trisha, how is, what is she like? Oh, she's so bubbly and energetic. I, I, I love her energy. She's awesome yeah. to work with. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's, she's real and down to earth, you know. Really? And that, that means that you find a business that you could relate to and talk to and, you know, come to a common goal with her. Yeah. That's cool. I love Trisha. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and then, I, I mean, there's so many women that she worked with that I, that I love, but that that one just stood out because her accent. And um, I'm my dad is from Jamaica too, or from Jamaica, so that Caribbean mm -hmm. thing just kind of. Um, oh yeah, it's thick for her. You know, she she wears it with pride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So you are a photographer. Um, what what would you say your your canvas was? Um, like I stated in interviews, my canvas is the human body and the human soul. You yes. know, early in my career, I viewed art as strictly something vain, you know, until I went to an art review once, and, and I think it was, it was a Korean or Japanese guy, I don't, didn't know exactly his uh, ethnicity, but he was an older gentleman, and he saw my, like, my black eye, black light art that I had uh, first started with, and he was like, this is amazing you know, visually wise. But he's like, where is the emotion? What is it that you wanna, how is it that you wanna engage um, with your audience? And, you know, I, I look at this picture and there was one that I had, he was like, and he pointed just the one out of the 20 that I had. He was like, you see this one? Cause the girl was crouched and kind of holding her head down. He was like, this draws me in because I wanna find out why she's like that. Who, you know, what happened to her and what's the story behind the image. So since then, you know, I think that was around maybe 2007 or eight that I had went to that review. I kind of narrowed down and started figuring out little by little how to capture the emotion and, you know, and not just the, you know, the, oh, it's pretty picture, but what's happening in the picture and kind of really talk to my audience like that. Wow. Wow. That's, that's crazy. So what... So when you say you started to look for the or the, the soul, can you talk a little bit more on that? Well, it, it, it's like a couple of, uh, well, they're not recent, but there was one story I did uh, with a Stephanie. She was in the, um, was it two years ago in Atlanta when I did a tour there? And she it was the boudoir day, mm -hmm. you know, and it, my hotel room was pretty chic, you know, so I said, let's, let's do it in there. You know, because women were, you know, wearing lingerie or half naked. So I want to make sure there was privacy. And she came in and she was, that was my first time shooting. I'm like, okay, and this is your first time shooting in Bronx Annie's. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, you're very brave. She's like, yeah. She's like, I'm doing it because, you know, she had um, the cancer. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's in the throat region. I think it's uh, one of the glands or something like that. And I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but just the survival story of her going through that. And I was like, wow, you know, and that really, when I shot her, I was shooting with the, with the energy that she was giving me, you know, that energy of living and conquering, and, you know, persevering through those troubling times. And after that, I actually called her up and I did a interview with her. And we, I wrote a story on based on her interview. Yeah, thyroid. Thank you, Chris. Okay. You know, and I sent it to Fabu Plus, and they published it. You know, and it was a, a story of the, you know, the art, and you know, yeah, she's in brown panty, but it, why? You know, why is she? You know, who is she? You know, what has she gone through? Things of that nature really drives me when it comes to art, not just shooting a pretty picture yeah i mean i still do the pretty pictures and stuff that just looks awesome but mm -hmm. i do like to engage and and touch people and find out their story because you know it interests me and, and I, I like to share it. yeah wow yeah that um i can definitely see that <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I mean, like you said, just with especially with the photo tour, 
um, it just, the photos just bring something so different and just refreshing to um, the continuous photo shoots that we typically get. Your photos just really stand out. And like you say, you're, you're trying to capture um, the soul or the story. You definitely feel like, you know, you want to know, like you want to see this, like you want to see what's going on. Yes. Um, so I've definitely gotten that feeling from a, a, a multiple of your shots. So I, I think you're definitely hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. How long have you been um, in in the, in doing art or any, any type of art in general? Well, before 2005, um, you know, I had a camera, but I was actually doing more like short films. I kind of got this thing where, you know, I used to write scripts. So I'm like, oh, you know what? Let me just film my scripts. And I kind of got into that. But then when the, the, the story never really came out the way I wanted to come out because there's so many people involved in filming, you know, okay. on set. You know, everybody has their subvisions of what you tell them the story's about. So it doesn't come out to what you envision it in your head. So one day I, you know, I was like, I got I to gotta do something fun and I got to do a project. And... You know, I looked at my wife, I was like, hey, you want to be my guinea pig? You know, I just got a, I got these black lights. I remember them for the parties. I was like, let me try see what I could do with them, this neon stuff. I like, I like to, I'm feeling it, you know? And something was brewing in my head and in my soul. And the universe was connecting with me and giving me ideas. So I threw it on her, you know? And I was like, oh, this looks interesting. You know, I was like, so, so she helped me, you know, kick it off from there. And I started practicing more and so I ask people at work you know I used, to, I used to be a detective in new york city so you know i'm in the office and i ask people in the office that weren't models i'm like hey you want to post nude for me just just so i could practice and they're like sure why not wow okay yeah i mean that's one thing with the project that i never ran into people i don't know if they read my soul or something they would just say yes when i would ask them you know to be my muse you know and i love that you know and so it just it just took off from there and I just started doing I mean I did I think was seven years of the black light shoots. Yeah. Like I had, you know, over I think actually over twenty thousand images from the black light series. But that really only culminated into like two hundred and sixty, two hundred and fifty final images. Right because of the technique I was doing for that shoot. It was a very different technique. It was like three to seven shots per image, meaning, you know, one shot included that many images because of the black light, you know, it's so difficult to to know, you know, it's just difficult to work with black light. It's not as easy as people think. You could take it with a cell phone, you know, have fun with it, but it's not as easy as people think it is. But yeah, that, that's how it started. It just started experimenting. That's why I actually gave it the title, The Black Light Photo Experiment, because I was experimenting. I was researching. I was actually testing stuff in my apartment, chemicals, uh, garments, paints, like everything, testing it out, you know, even throwing, wow. even filling up a pool full of suds with neon soap in it and turning on the black light and filling it in my living room and kids jumping in it and me filming it just to see if it. <laughs> okay, <Marla, right? laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. Now, um, one of the comments are detectives are trained to notice every detail, so it's no wonder your photographs would be great. Do you think that your previous work made any type of influence toward what you're doing now? No, I, I, I've always been creative since I was young, and I've always been a, a detail person because I remember when I used to walk down the street when I was, you know, nine or ten years old and I actually just walking down the street on the way to school and I'll see a little piece of plastic on the floor that was interesting and I'll just collect it and I'll do that every day all day until I had like this big box full of just various plastic pieces doodads you know just junk and I would sit down on the weekends and then I'll build things just from these pieces and I'll be like oh this is perfect this is perfect so it, it's always been in me to to see the see the finer things and see the detail and look at something and somebody says that junk and I'll be like nah I can make you something with that you know <laughs> that's pretty cool what what what's the most memorable thing that you've ever made with those pieces I actually made these these 
I would, they were like starships, you know, because I was a big Star Wars fan. I like sci-fi. I like anything that's a hero and, you know, astron, you know, astronomical and stuff like that. And yeah. I made these two ships. I, st I think I still have the pictures when I built them because I actually built them and then made a, a set with clay and stuff. Wow. Made it looked like it was Mars and put them on there. But it was all computer pieces, junk, and I just made things out of them. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> now, I noticed that you work with, um, pretty, for the most part, curvy women, if not all of all of your work is, well, not all, because you just said that you, you, you shot children before. So what has gotten you to the point where you are shooting, uh, I, I would say probably mostly curvy women? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not, you know, stuck to any genre, but the curvy community loves my work, and I love I love my curvy community. I mean, my wife is curvy, you know, so there is affinity, and I'm attracted to the curvy world, you know, but by no means do I shun anybody else that wants to shoot. Like, I actually shot, um, in, when I was in New York City, I shot for the Hunks for Hope men's calendar every year, which um, go towards domestic violence uh, victims. And I was part of the board for that, you know. So I've worked with, yeah, I've, I was on the board for the X Collective, a, a nonprofit art organization in, in the Bronx. You know, so it's just the curvy, curvy people know that I know what I'm doing <laughs> behind the lens. And I make sure that I bring their curves and make sure they're, I capture their flattery, you know. It's, some people, you know, they don't care or they just don't know yet and they shoot different angles and they don't get it right. You know, it takes practice. But with me, it just came natural. Hmm. So is so what would you say, um, I guess to go into a little bit more, what would you say sets you apart from other photographers that shoot curvy women? Uh, I'm, I'm more organic, I, I, I guess, uh, I mean, there's, there's a, a lot of amazing guys out there that, and girls that know how to shoot curvy women, but, you know, I just trust my eye when, when it comes to certain things. I don't push myself to shoot something I think might not look good or, I'll, you know, I'll keep it honest with people, you know, and, and I, especially clients, like, they'll book me and I'll be like, well, um, you know, what are you going to wear? Can you show me? Mm-hmm. Not just show me put on the bed. No, put it on, send me a picture, and I'll I'll be very honest with you. You know, you know, whether you change the outfit or adjust it or maybe add a different accessory, you know, because I don't want people to go in front of the camera and then they share it and you know, most people out there they're not gonna tell you, Oh, you girl, that don't look right on you. Why you took a picture? And they're gonna be like, Oh, and they're gonna give snaps and they're gonna right. say everything, but in the background they're like, Yo, that looks wrong on her you know it just didn't flatter mm -hmm. her you know I, I i keep it honest behind the scenes so we can make magic simple as that absolutely absolutely so it just seems like you have a very kind of a like you said a genuine interest in producing quality images oh for sure for sure i i don't believe in wasting people's time wasting my time you know, because I've shot stuff and then people say, oh, I, I didn't like the makeup. And I'm just like, oh, you know, like we just wasted, you know, time creating something and you weren't happy. Right. You know, but it is what it is. You know, just move on. <laughs> so it seems like there's a lot of experience. Now, you said you did the the Blacklight series for about seven years. <clears throat> yeah. So about how long total have you been shooting? Um, like I said, since two, since 2005. Okay. Um, but before that, again, I was mainly dealing with film. Right. You know, but again, I started with, with hands. I used to make things. I mean, and I still do. Like my last series, my last art series that I just posted, I think, yesterday or the day before with Krissa, who is actually watching with us. Um, and it's in volup2.com. Um, that was stuff I made, props I made here in, in Florida. Now, cause now I have a garage, so now I got a workshop, you know? Wow. So we're going to be expecting a lot more, uh, a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the COVID kind of like put a dent in, in my creativity and things like that. But, yeah. you know, I, what I did, I just revamped and said, you know, let me just put a lot of the art that I never put out there. Right. For sale, so people can have them in their homes and 
you know, kind of spice up their lives and things like that, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. So when you're when you're shooting now, like what 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 projects or what things do you have going on now? I know you said um you're kind of doing a little bit different because of COVID. Um, but what are you what what are the folk where are the focuses like currently? Well, one of the focuses, um, I took the black light project, uh, black light photo experiment and turned it into the black light experience for consumers. Okay. So that's one thing I campaign I started on. I actually had uh, my, my tour ambassador from Detroit. She came down with a few people and they participated um, for their prints. So they came down and we did the black light with them, you know, custom and I made some, some African pieces to kind of because she wanted something very you know pro African, and it, 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 that that project you know it's it's going to be ongoing for people to yeah. have that experience, and then uh, and I'm so like, what what is that called again? It's called the Black Light Experience. So the it's Black the, you know experience. it's it's the same thing. It's just for a person to create art for their own selves for their own home. So right. they say, hey, you know, I want to shoot. They sit down and then they purchase a piece. They don't get like the, all the digital images like a regular shoot. No, they get to view them and then they say, okay, I love this one. This is the one I want in my living room. And then we get them a nice huge piece that they could put up centerpiece in their living room and wow, they're guests. Simple as yes. that. Yes. <laughs> okay. That is awesome. That is yes. awesome. Yes. Um, what and else? Is, what we say was next? Um, and another project, it's actually a long-term project. It started in 2018. Um, it's a project, it's a nude art project and all curvy women. And it's basically, it's, it's a story and, and the story is still building and, and I'm still formulating my words for it because, you know, I get tired of people seeing, you know, a curvy woman dressed a certain way and then they comment negatively because they feel good about how they dress, you know, because I remember when I was young and I'd be around guys and, you, you see a, a, a plus size woman dressed with something, you know, that usually a skinny girl back in the days would wear and they'll make comments like, oh, look at that. You know, she, she don't fit in that. She's like a pig or whatever. And I remember like kind of joining in with them and joking and cracking jokes. And then, I, mm. you know, as I got older, I'm like, yo, that's not, that's not a good look, you know, because what if I'm that person and I just feel good dressed that way? I don't think I want people to judge me just because I feel good inside, you know, and the, the, it's all art. So I created props and stuff for this project and shot several muses for it and, and interviewed them. I've interviewed other people for it. And the title of it, it's called Beautifully Sickening. Because, wow. Because uh, I hate hearing the term of, oh, she's pretty for a fat girl, things like that. So, you know, it's like a double edged sword, you know, when you're a woman. You know, it's okay until it's not okay, right. you know? So that's my major project I'm working on right now. It's just me. I don't have any backers or anybody helping me put together the documentary because all the images are done. It's just sitting down and editing the film and, you know, giving something I could show to the public. Absolutely. Wow. I can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Absolutely. It's just been tough. This has been tough working on that. I had one model, she was so upset at me. She was like, when can I see the images? And I'm like, I can't, not yet, it's not done. You know, cause I just, in this industry, you know, unfortunately, you know, you put something out there, as far as imagery, somebody goes and copies it and it puts right. it out there. I just can't play that. I don't play that game. Absolutely. Now, uh, I know with the photo tour, you know, everything with COVID is a little kind of crazy. So can we ever expect anything like that again? That's that's the thing that with, with this pandemic, everything is up in the air. Like I know there's one award um, ceremony for um, size overrated magazine that they're having in, in Virginia. It was, you know, mm -hmm. postponed because of the COVID. Now it's postponed to right. September and this thing is still going. Right? I'm like, oh, you know, it, it sucks because I'm shooting people. It was supposed to be a tour this year. Obviously, it wasn't. Right. You know, and I'm supposed to be shooting a bunch of beautiful women down there. That's kind of like a, an official tour shoot, you know, as I get, because I think I'm being honored, you know, for um, one of the men inside Size Overrated. And I was going to shoot, you know, but 
I need to sit down and plan, but this thing is just keeps roaring. And now Florida's on fire, Atlanta's on fire, you know. It's just, it's really tough. So I don't know if I'm going to do like a big tour next year. I might just do a couple of cities, you know, and maybe even just where it's sunny and warm type cities, you know, in the Caribbean, somewhere like that. So what would you say is the goal for your art and, and what you're doing? Well, my goal is to touch people, you know, is to just have people engage, have, open people's eyes, educate men, because that's one of my components in the documentary is I want to educate men. I want, I want people to feel like, you know, you could see a curvy woman on the wall in a museum, you know, because everybody's, oh, that's acceptable, you know, so it's mm -hmm. art. But no, what if it's art, live view art? What if it's somebody real in your face, you know? How are you gonna react? Right. You know, and one of my components, like I said, with the documentary is to educate men. Like, you could see a, a woman half naked, but that don't mean that you could uh, violate or be negative and do, ne you know, bad things just because you can't control yourself. I want men to understand how to appreciate it soak it in it's okay women don't for the most part don't mind if you look but just there's boundaries you right. know there's limits to certain things you can do in life you know and appreciate it and, and keep it moving you know and, and with my art i want you to appreciate it talk about it and then keep it moving <laughs> absolutely absolutely um so what would you want us to know just about the community that you work with um the community that you're a part of um, I just want the people to know that, you know, the art community, curvy art community, it, it's just all about positivity and being real. I mean, most of my muses, for the most part, were, you know, were regular people. Yeah. You know, regular folks that weren't models, that weren't artists, they just were people that wanted to live, you know, to have an experience, you know, to talk about it, to, to be able to say, oh, I did that. You know, and have no shame because, you know, God gave us these bodies and it's not to be shamed about, embarrassed about, or worried about, like, what, what is it? Where did that come from? You know, yeah. and I just hate that the fact that the human body in this country was, has been demonized. And I feel like it's my job to, to unravel that, you know, and to just open people's eyes and say, this is natural, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You can even see some of my art back here I had, I had posted. You know, so people could kind of get a feeling of, you know, how serious. Like this one right here, that's, uh, that's from the Chakralicious project I did. Chakra, you know, the, 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 the energy points in the body. It's all like, mm -hmm. that's not Photoshop. That's actually shot like that, you know. What? Yeah. That's so that, all that, lighting? Mm-hmm. That's all, it's all lighting, open shutter. You know, again, that's just like the black light. That's a very intense type of photography that once I'm done, I'm done. Like, I'm not doing nothing after the shoot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. that is amazing. That, I, have that another, is amazing. I have another one, one sec. This, is, wow. this one I did on the rooftop of my building when I was in New York. That was all in shot. That's not the only thing photoshopped is actually her arms, but those are her arms, just in different frames. So I don't know if you could see it. With this glare. That's all. That was fire. That was fire in the background. Stop. What? Mm hmm <laughs> That is crazy. <laughs> And I know, That's wild. That is super wild. I know, I know uh, good curvy like black and whites, and I actually did a whole segment in for the black light that was black yeah. and white. It, it was actually shot in color, but there were certain images I specifically curated for exhibit. Like this is one of them wow. that was shot with the black light. Wow. But with the, my conversion process, it just brought out amazing details and texture. Wow. And curve. This one, I mean, I'll, I'll try to cover the nipple because you know people how they like to report videos and stuff. That, that was in black light as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, thank you. 
<laughs> what? And that's all in in shot. That's not photoshopped at all. No, I mean the the process to combine the images. Obviously, I have to do in software. Right. 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 Yeah. Wow. See the everything brings out the details, you know, with the black light. Everything that's neon just shines. This was one of an amazing shoot with these two models that I did. Wow, it's a little wow. That's crazy. You, like, would, think, you would think it's like a negative, or you know, like some kind of weird negative effect. You know, again, I guess that's the way I look at it when I when I convert to the black and white. Yeah. That is so, so awesome. Like, super, I mean, it, it, it just, it really just shows, like, just how much you put into the work. Like, it's just really amazing. It's just really amazing. Like, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having that focus and, and You're for welcome. using the cabin, doing it with curvy women. And, and just thank you for that. It's just so beautiful and re just refreshing to see. I have one more big one because I love, I love, exhibiting my black light stuff in um metal prints okay. metal prints is complements my work and that it actually first came out when i started doing the black light mm -hmm. so i'm like okay god just made a whole medium for me to exhibit my stuff <laughs> perfect <laughs> this one is on wow. metal that's a metal print right wow and it's black and converted to black and white. This was this was black light, and I converted it. Wow! So you can see the detail, and it, it's just amazing. amazing. Yeah, I mean, I can see it even through through the live. So I can only imagine in person what you oh, can, yeah. like. That's crazy. Yeah, my my goal is to have people, you know, commission or to purchase already created art, yeah. and just put like big prints. So I'm talking about exaggerated where it takes up a whole wall oh, that's my yes. goal you know yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely well gosh it's so so much i'm so so glad that you um thank you so much for um taking the time out to talk to us um curves on on canvas we just want to put the information out there that there there is a curvy art scene um there are artists that are using curvy women to create art and it's beautiful, it's progressive, innovative, and you are definitely one of those people that are out here doing it. And we appreciate you and love you so much um, for the effort Thank and the quality so that you, you put into it. Um, <laughs> it is just truly, truly amazing. Um, just give us a little rundown a little bit um, about where we can find you. Well, obviously here, IG um, is one of the main platforms. I'm also on Facebook, same thing, Jose Pagan Photography. Yes. My website, is Jose Pagan Photography .com. Um, I have my photo tour site. I might be shifting it over to my just my photography site under a new tab. But for now, it's photo tour with Jose Pagan. If you go on there, you can sign up for the email list and just you know stay up to date where I'm coming. And the good thing is, like a lot of people on tour recently in the past couple of years have been wanting to shoot new art while I'm on tour. You know. Mm -hmm. And, and I love it because I go out there and we create and we just make amazing things together. And, you know, it's just empowering. You know, I love to help women free themselves from this patriarchal, you know, conundrum. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> now, all of that, um, all, everywhere you can reach Jose is definitely going to be on the Good Curvy website as well. So in case you missed anything, you can awesome. definitely rewind or check the website. He's got um, there. He's got his whole feature there. So you can definitely find out those places where you can reach him, find out some more information about him and how to support and all that stuff. So thank you again, Jose, thank for talking too. to us. Um, I mean, it was truly amazing. We got so, so much information. Um, have a wonderful day and stay stay safe. <laughs> yeah, you too. You too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> I can't even get out, but that was oh my god, that was so freaking awesome, guys! Make sure you go and check out Jose Pagan. His Instagram, his work is off the chain. The stuff that he showed, I I didn't even know that he did the black light um the black light series. So, I mean, it is just, just, just so awesome.